The Chicago Civic Opera Building, constructed in 1929 at the start of the Great Depression, is the current home of the Lyric Opera of Chicago. This building that combines the lower level opera house with a skyscraper full of corporate tenants was meant to portray the harmony of culture and commerce, which encapsulates the soul of Chicago. Located inside the loop looming over the Chicago River, the city's first opera house is commonly referred to as Insul's Throne. Samuel Insull, the building's commissioner, was a patron of the arts and a prominent capitalist figure of the city. The throne faces west. This direction is very intentional as it's facing away from New York City. Once Insull's prospects for advancement in New York were denied, he sought to create his own electricity empire in Chicago. There could possibly be another reason for Insull to turn his back on New York. His wife was an actress, which sparked an interesting urban legend. The story goes that she was rejected from the New York Metropolitan Opera and Insull built her a new opera in Chicago as a result. In addition to Insull's personal goals, Chicago's new opera house was another way for the city to match New York in culture and sophistication. Even the interior of the opera house is a testament to Chicago's separation from New York. The theater does not contain boxes where the rich can isolate themselves and thus identify Chicago as a more democratic city. The sense of equity is even more poignant in an opera theater, historically one of the most elitist art forms. Additionally, the building blends in seamlessly with the other skyscrapers that line the Chicago River. Its placement on the river emphasizes the building's importance as it flows through the heart of the city, but its design does not overpower any other building. Rather, the Civic Opera Building equally contributes to the overall harmony of Chicago's center. Insull hired the acclaimed architectural firm Graham Anderson Probst & White to achieve these ideals. The skyscraper is designed in the Art Deco style except for the lower level of the eastern facade which has many neoclassical influences. Adorning the entrance is a sculpture by Henry Herring that features two women meant to personify the arts, a modern rendition of the muses. Figures of women often represented abstract ideas in ancient Rome and this trend has continued in American design today, especially in Herring's work. Here they sit in repose as they welcome patrons into the house of the arts. Motifs of theatrical masks are also prominent throughout the building's decoration. The masks of tragedy and comedy originated in the practice of Greek drama, an art form integral to ancient society. These masks no longer serve a practical function like amplifying sound, but now serve as a symbol for the theatrical arts and further mark out the Chicago Civic Opera Building as a cultural landmark. The masks serve to honor the art form of theater and decorative lyres, the symbol of Apollo, are present in order to emphasize the importance of music, which Apollo was the god of. These classically inspired motifs are featured on opera houses throughout the world, most notably the Palais Garnier in Paris, which the architectural team sought to mimic. Their goal was to rise to the same level as these famously sophisticated cities while breathing Chicago's own spirit into the elegance. Bosques, bundles of wooden rods that were a symbol of power and official jurisdiction in ancient Rome, are present on the sides of the buildings. These depictions do not include an axe in addition to the fosques that represented punishment and violence, thus presenting Chicago as an idealized version of Rome. Stylized shafts of wheat are peppered throughout the sculpture as well, derived from the Roman agricultural goddess Ceres, representing the area's booming agricultural industry which has become a symbol of Chicago's commerce altogether. The neoclassical elements are done in the Greco Deco style, combining classical and art deco designs. The modern style of the building representing Chicago's innovation pairs beautifully with its classically inspired features that represent the city's emphasis on culture. The Civic Opera Building perfectly encapsulates the way that Chicago refuses to choose between tradition and modernity, and instead embraces both principles and the identity it presents to the world.